Hey friends, we just got done watching the AMD Zen 3 live stream over on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. And suffice it to say that it's insane. The Ryzen 5000 series is way better than all of the leaks were indicating in quite a few number of ways, including, but not limited to, taking the gaming crown from Intel quite handedly. Obviously, we have to wait until performance benchmarks come out from independent third-party reviewers, but showing what AMD has on the back end themselves, it does look like Ryzen 5000 is going to be the chip to go with if you're concerned about value or if you're concerned about having the best performance kind of bar none. That's exactly where we're at after the announcement. So I'm going to go ahead and give you all of the details of everything that's going on there to hopefully give you uh, just a good insight to when you can expect to slot Zen 3 into your system, how much it's going to cost, what you're getting for that price, and also what you're not getting because there are a few things that AMD didn't actually announce in their keynote about these Zen 3 chips that are going to be relevant to you as a customer. So let's jump into it. Number one is that we're getting them on November 5th. We are just about a month away. That is exactly when they're coming and we are getting four different chips. The Ryzen 9 5950X, the Ryzen 9 5900X, the Ryzen 7 5800X, and the Ryzen 5 5600X. What you can see here is that there is no core count increase coming at all. It's going to be the exact same core count. However, there are going to be slightly higher frequencies. The 5950X is coming in at 4.9 gigahertz turbo frequency boost, which is not five gigahertz, but you'll take it for what it is. And what I will not take is the fact that AMD did not start their keynote by having Lisa Sue ride out on the AMD bike. I absolutely refuse to buy these chips because of it. So let's get into the pricing and how much it's going to cost you to buy these chips, which is $799 for the Ryzen 9 5950X, $549 for the 5900X, $449 for the 5800X, and $299 for the 5600X, which is a solid $50 price increase across the board compared to the predecessors. The 3950X was $749, the 3900X was $499, yada, 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 all the way down. So AMD is increasing the price by $50, which is as high as 20% as in the case of the 5600X and as low as 6% in the case of the 5950X. Let's go ahead and see if that price increase is actually justified with the performance that AMD is claiming. But one of the things to note is that the only CPU that's going to come bundled with a CPU cooler is the 5600X because AMD is claiming that their stock coolers will not be able to cool these 105 watt TDP chips of the 5800X and up. So only the 65 watt TDP 5600X is going to come with a bundled CPU cooler. So the 5900 X and the 5800X are already coming in at a slightly less appealing offer because they don't have a stock cooler. We talked about this in the live stream that we did, and several people were kind of upset at the fact that AMD is removing the stock cooler even from these higher end chips. And the few things that we can note that aren't different between the third gen and the fifth gen here is the fact that they did change nothing as far as we know with the Infinity Fabric. They changed nothing as far as we know with the IO die, so that's all going to be the same, as well as their PC. PCI Express 4.0 support, still getting 24 lanes and not much else is changing there. And in case you're wondering why they're going with the 5,000 naming scheme over the 3,000, we've established this a couple of times I have in my hands right here a Ryzen 4000 chip. This is the Ryzen 7 4750G. They are only doing 4000 in the APUs and the mobile sector, such as the 4800H or the 4500U. Those are the 4000 series. And now the next gen APUs, which are actually going to be based on Zen 3, because my 4750G is only based on Zen 2, will be called the 5000 series as well. So they're just kind of lining everything up a bit more cohesively is the general idea of what's going on there. So the big thing is that AMD is claiming that there is a 19% IPC uplift for their CPUs. Now, if you're not familiar with the term IPC, it stands for instructions per clock or instructions per cycle. So that's to say right here, if the 3900X is at four gigahertz and the 5900X is at four gigahertz, the 5900X will be 19% faster in workloads based on AMD averaging 25 workloads that they tested, which is really good. However, it's just a hypothetical. We're gonna get into gaming in a second. The way they did did this was by simplifying a few things such as the core complexes, allowing better access to the L3 cache, reducing memory latency as with a few breakdowns such as cache prefetching, execution engine improvements and all of this as you can see right there. But let's get to the better improvements which is that they have the highest single core performance 
out of any chip anywhere. They are beating Intel, both the 10900K as well as the recently announced and released Tiger Lake. They came in at a single thread Cinebench R20 score of 631 points for the 5900X and 640 points for the 5950X, which is faster than anything that Intel has on the market. So not only does AMD win multi-threaded, but they now also win single-threaded, which in case you're wondering, actually really matters for games. That's kind of been the big downfall for AMD's Zen processors is that their single threaded performance hasn't been on par with Intel. So Intel's kind of eked ahead as the gaming king. And now they don't have that crown any longer, at least according to AMD. So comparing 1080p gaming benchmarks, the 5900X was about 26% faster than the 3900 XT. That is a processor that launched in July. Now comparing that 5900X to the 10900K from Intel, and it was about a 7% win. So so AMD is beating Intel by 7% when they were losing by 2 to 3% just a little bit ago. So that's a huge, huge step forward in just a year. AMD is continuing to deliver year on year improvements that we have not seen from Intel in quite some time, which is one of the reasons why they're so far ahead. And one of the cheeky slides that AMD released was the fact that they are now the market leader in 1080p gaming, core architecture, IPC, power efficiency, single threaded performance, multi-threaded performance, performance per dollar, and backwards compatibility. One of the things that AMD did know is that they have a 2.4 times performance per watt over the original generation of Ryzen and a 2.8 times performance per watt over the 10900K, which just kind of indicates that AMD is absolutely crushing Intel in all metrics right now, both in gaming, both in cooling, as well as just in affordability. So that price point, as we mentioned, is a little bit higher. However, AMD is saying that they still are delivering the best performance per dollar, which I can kind of indicate that they are indeed because at these similar price points from Intel, AMD is going to be the better buy and you're not paying that much more. It seems to be that the AMD CPU is about $20 more than the Intel equivalent and they're delivering extra performance for that extra $20, which makes a little bit of sense. We did mention that they are pulling away stock coolers from the higher end chips, which reduces their extra value a little bit, but at the same time, price to performance has nothing to do with whether or not it comes with the stock cooler. Now let's go ahead and talk about something that AMD didn't mention on stage, which is, comes to motherboards. There is no new announcement of a new 600 series motherboard chipset. No X670, no B650. That's not happening. It seems that AMD is sticking with X570 and B550 as their high-end flagship motherboards right now. And they also indicated two presses that the 500 series chipset. So if you have a B550 or an X570, your motherboard vendors should release a BIOS update between now and November 5th so that you're ready to go on launch day. So if you have a 500 series motherboard, you will be good to go for this latest generation of CPUs. However, if you're on B450 or X470, you have to wait until January, them announcing that the first beta BIOSes for the Ryzen 5000 series support will not happen until January. And then the full release of those will happen at some point later. So if you're on B450 and you pick up a Ryzen 5900X, on November 5th, you will not be able to use it on your current chipset. It will not work. So you have to hold off on that if you have a B450 or an X470, or you will have to upgrade your motherboard in order to use it in November and December. So that's essentially it. They're coming out November 5th. Reviews, according to a non-tech, will be coming out on the exact same day. So we won't have reviews ahead of time. It will be on the same launch, but we're getting four brand new chips from AMD. I'll just recap them once again. It's the 5600X, the 5800X, 5900X, and 5950X. 19% IPC uplift, a 6 to 20% price increase, and then also remover of stock coolers. But beating Intel at gaming is kind of the headline here. But that wasn't the only thing that AMD gave us with their keynote. They also teased their big Navi GPU. Lisa Sue had it on stage, showed it off, as well as showed us some benchmark. I've already seen this in this Fortnite. This is the AMD Radeon RX 6000 series, Ooh. which we now affectionately call Big Navi, thanks to many of you who nicknamed it for us. <laughs> it is absolutely gorgeous and by far the most powerful gaming GPU we have ever built. We got a lot of requests from our fans on social, and I heard a whole conversation on The Full Nerd last week about wanting to see Zen 3 and Big Navi in action. Now it's hard to say exactly what's going on right here, especially since AMD used a test bench, which is not available 
at all. AMD used this with the 5900X. There is no NVIDIA benchmark out there with an NVIDIA card that shows these numbers because if the best gaming CPU is being used for this GPU, it's not being used for NVIDIA because it's not out yet, just to set that up. But these performance numbers of 61 FPS in Borderlands 3 at 4K, 88 FPS for Modern Warfare, and 73 FPS for Gears of War 5, all at either ultra or badass quality, would indicate that this big Navi GPU is on par with the RTX 3080. That's the indication that we're getting. However, as I mentioned, we don't know because it has a different CPU, which could be allowing it to have some higher FPS. And then if we paired the 3080 with the 5900X, the 3080 might actually also be a little bit faster. So it's hard to say, and it also really will depend on price, but start getting a little bit excited that AMD might be able to match NVIDIA here with this next generation. And then I just want to leave us with what I think is the most appropriate gift to sum up the AMD announcement. Here it is. Here is Lisa Sue announcing the 5900X. This is the most beautiful thing you're going to see in your life. Yes, Lisa Sue has a mech, 100% perfect, or Super Saiyan 3 Goku for Zen 3, my friends. Super Saiyan 3 Goku for Zen 3, it's the truth. Intel, running scared, just like Bobbity should, it's over. What do you think? What do you think of the Ryzen 5000 series? Uh, are you excited for it? Is this something that you're gonna be upgraded to? Are you satisfied with your Zen 2 purchase? Do you think the removal of the stock coolers from these chips makes a difference to you? Does the $50 price increase hurt you? I'm keen to hear from you guys down below. Let me know what you think of the Ryzen 5000 series. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.